today I am here with Ellen O. She is the author of this book, this book, and this book. Let's talk to Ellen. Ellen, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Hi, Meg. I'm so glad to be here, and it's so gorgeous. I know. I, I kind of like this office. I like it, and, uh, you know, Kermie might like it over my shoulder also. <laughs> um, I start every interview the same way. I ask everybody to come and book talk a book that really sat on their heart. What did you bring today? So I brought March, the third book. And the reason I brought it is because it's a book that, since I've read it, I've never forgotten. It was so impactful. And it's, I think because it's historical, I mean, it's, you know, the, the late, amazing Congressman John Lewis's um, memoir. Yeah, and I love that it's a graphic uh, interpretation of those events because you really can feel you know, what it was like to be um, Congressman Lewis in that moment. Mm -hmm. I also felt like, I remember when he began the March uh, series and uh, so many accolades and so on, and he was such a hopeful person. Do you remember that about him as well? I, I most remember his speech when he won the uh, National Book Award, mm -hmm. and he said that he couldn't even get a library card when he was growing up, and then to win a book, uh, you know, the best book yeah. from the National Book Award was just such a moment. To me, I always have such a bright and warm memory of him, and um, I just hope that everybody, everybody reads these books and remembers yeah, what he's done. Including the next person who's going to step up and be the next John Lewis, who can see themselves today and do it. So I want to talk to you a little bit about your writing. So first thing, you know, the body of your work, we're going to unpack it in a minute, but I'm going to ask you in five words, what are five words that describe your work? I have a varied scope of, of writing that I've done. Um, I, I tend to be action-packed, so I would say I'm very action-focused uh, and scary. Violent, sad. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> right? All the things kids love. So I want to talk to you about that because like the Spirit Hunter series, for example, is just this spine-tingling ghost uh, series. And kids love to be scared, which I think surprises some parents. Why do you think kids like to be scared? That's the first part. And the second question related is, is there anything that's like ever too scary? So why do kids like to be scared, do you think? I think about like, okay, for me, I had parents that were constantly scaring me all the time. Like my dad's <laughs> favorite thing in the world was like telling me scary stories. Like of this one time where he told me about this monster that will you know, call your name three times and if you turn around before the third time, it'll eat your face off. And you know, that night, like late at night, he comes to my room and he's like, Ellen. <laughs> oh and then he doesn't, like, you know, you, you're not supposed to respond until after the third time and you're safe. And he didn't. He said it twice. And so I was awake all night. So, like, you know, that's how I grew up. And so I became the parent that didn't like to scare my own kids, right? Uh, until I started writing scary stories. And I could, and I realized what great joy there was in scaring other people's <laughs> children, too, right? Just, Tons and tons of them. So that became a joyous moment for me. But I also think that kids love scary because it's a safe space to explore your fears. But again, like with the with scary books, especially uh, for a kid, not only is it an exploration of fear for them, but it's also ability to say, "Hey, you can actually come out okay. There's going to be a happy ending, at least in my books. <laughs> There's going to be a happy ending. It'll be fine." And I think that's great because you have that, like you know big thrill, fear, and then you're like, okay, it's safe. Everything worked out. And so maybe they take some hope when they walk out of that going, okay, I can maybe work through my fears and it'll be okay too. I think that's one of the contracts that, that we children's authors have with our readers, mm -hmm. right? That we leave them um, almost always, in, not necessarily with everything tied up neatly, but certainly on a note of like, 
hope and sort of future possibilities. Exactly. And also knowing that there is a broader group of people that will always be there to support you. So, so what stories reside inside you that you're still interested in writing? Are there things you want to experiment with still? Oh yeah, I have so many stories because I have a brain that it's kind of like it's a movie theater for one person. I have my own individual personalized theater in my head. And it's just like movies show all the time. And I'm like, oh, that one sounds great. I want to write that one. I have a fantasy that's been playing in my head for years. Uh, and I think I finally might actually get the time to, to write that. Because, you know, like epic fantasy, that's another whole world building. And <laughs> rough. Well, let me tell you, when you go to that movie theater, I'm, I want some popcorn. I want to join you, please. <laughs> sure. Ellen, it has been so wonderful to have you um, here. Thank you. Thank you for all the things that you've done to make children's book publishing a, a more inclusive place. And thank you for your beautiful writing. And thanks for coming out to the library today. It's oh, been great to you. talk with you. Thank you, Meg, for everything.